it's back! The 2021 season of the most competitive championship in the world started this weekend and was packed full of excitement. We had the match between the two last Brazilian Rail champions, Flamengo and Palmeiras. The four teams that came up from last year's Serie B got an early taste of how hard the top flight will be. And Giants, Corinthians and Santos suffered big losses and are both already on alert for the season. The goals, the tricks and the Brazilian swing are all back. The Brasilia 2021 has started and you can see everything from Match Week 1 here on our magazine. The last very game of the Brasilia Rao 2021 was between two teams recently promoted from Serie B, Cuiabá and Juventude. This was the home team's debut in the first division, while the visitors were returning after a period of 14 years away from the top flight. The game started with few opportunities, but the Dourados were lethal in their first clear-cut goal opportunity. With 28 minutes on the clock, Jonathan Cafu, on loan from Corinthians, played a 1-2 with Clayson, another former musketeer. The frontman cut into the middle and found the net, with a shot that left the goalkeeper Marcelo Carni well beaten. This was the first goal for Cuiabá in the elite of the Brasilia Real. But Juventude didn't wait too long for the comeback. Alisson crossed from the left after a quick counter-attack. Pepe misjudged it, leaving Wesley to hit the net in a beautiful fashion, levelling the score. Just three minutes later, Capixaba received a pass from Chico. He delivered a low cross into the box that left Cuiabá's defenders just looking, while Matheus Pichotto got the final touch to put Juventude ahead. A quick comeback for Juve. After the break, Juventude almost increased the score when Chico received a cross that left him one-on-one -on -one with Volta. A great effort from the goalkeeper denying Chico in his first important save of the game. In the final minutes, the home side piled on the pressure and were rewarded late on. Sub, Guilherme Pato, delivered a pinpoint cross to Elton's diving header. All square in the Arena Patanal as the striker delivered his ninth goal of the season. Despite the draw, coach Alberto Valchim was shown the door and became the first coach to lose his job in the Brasilia Real 2021. He leads Cuiabá undefeated with seven wins, three draws in ten matches. Bahia entered the Brasilia Rao as the North East champions. Santos had a rough start this season as they were eliminated from the Libertadores and didn't make it to the Campeonato Paulus de Playoffs. In the match between Bahia and Santos, manager Fernando Diniz did not like what he saw on the pitch. But if Diniz was unhappy on the Santos bench, on the other side, coach Tado Cavalcanti was all smiles. And the reason for his happiness was Tassiano. Santos attempted to open the scoring after a poor first half, but Mateus Klaus stopped Mourinho's shot. A great save from the goalkeeper. But it was Tassiano in only five minutes who controlled the game. A minute into the second half, the midfielder got on the end of Hossi's cross to slide home from close range. 1-0 by year. Three minutes later, Hossi once again cut through the right and brushed off Luan Perez. Tassiano was there in the box to double the score with a precise shot. And it was time for the third as Daniel's cross found defender Juninho to head into the net. Santos tried to put some pressure on at the end to salvage some respect, but with no success. Final score in Salvador by year three, Santos nil. San Paolo and Fluminense faced off in the Morumbi in a much-awaited tussle. Both teams delivered great performances earlier this season and looked for a win to kick off the Brasilia Rao. 
and while Sao Paulo were playing at home, the Tricolor from here had the best opportunities in the game. With three minutes on the clock, Egigio delivered a perfect long pass to Abel Hernandez. The striker finished at close range, forcing Thiago Volpi to perform a fantastic save. One of Sao Paulo's only chances came from frontman Pablo. The number nine attempted a cheeky back heel flick to surprise the goalkeeper. Manager Hernan Crespo also had the chance to show his skills with his heels. Would the outcome have been different if the manager were on the field? The game's best opportunity came after Igor Vinicius knocked down Abel Hernandez in the box. Nene had the mission to put the team from here ahead with the penalty, but was denied by Thiago Volpi. Fluminense picked up the pace after the break. Gabriel Teixeira received a nice pass on the right that left him one-on-one -on -one with Volpi. The winger took the ball on his chest and aimed for the corner of the net, but the ball hit the post before going out. The game then cooled off with few chances for both teams. But in the last 10 minutes though, the home team woke up and started creating opportunities. The best one came after a brilliant solo play. Hinaldo cut through the left, lobbed the defender and crossed to Rojas, but the winger delivered a poor shot. Nil nil in the match between the two Tricolores. Both teams got one point in the first round and they move on with higher expectations for a better campaign in the Brazil. Atletico began their journey to a much hoped for second national title with high morale after they brought in top players to strengthen the squad. This was going to be a tough task for the Lions against Gallo in Bela Horizonte. Hulk celebrating? That doesn't seem to be right. Who had the last laugh in Bela Horizonte at the Mineral Stadium with Fortaleza. The team, commanded by Argentine coach Voivoda, had to do it the hard way. Gallo opened the scoring with a penalty converted by Hulk. Part of a strong forward is brought down inside the box. After the break, Fortaleza put Iago Pikachu in the game. 15 minutes into the second half, the player received a beautiful pass from Hobson and leveled the score with a powerful shot. A great goal by Pikachu. Gallo went searching for the win, but the free kick from Hulk was stopped by an unbelievable save from Felipe Alves. A few minutes later, Vargas brushed off the defender inside the box but had his final shot blocked by Chinga, who celebrated the save as if it were a goal. In the final minutes, Pikachu reappeared in the game and with a magnificent goal. Davidi started the counter-attack and delivered the pass to Pikachu, who blasted a shot from outside the box into the opposite top corner. A brilliant goal to secure the win for the Tricolor. In one of the Brasile Rao's most expected matchups, two of the best squads in the country went head-to-head -head as Flamengo faced Palmeiras in the Maracanã. But the game itself failed to live up to expectations, even though both teams used their best players on a rainy afternoon in Rio de Janeiro. The first goal opportunity came from Pedro. After a beautiful pass from Mahaskieta, the striker tried to get past Weberton, but the goalkeeper did a good job blocking the ball. With 17 minutes on the clock, Connie cut down the right. He delivered a low cross to Luis Adriano in the penalty area, but the shot at close range was stopped by a spectacular Diego Alves save. An unbelievable opportunity missed by Palmeiras. Palmeiras once again went on to the attack, and once again it was with Honey. The front man beat Gerson for speed, cut to the middle, and forced Diego Alves into making another great save. With only a minute into the second half, Ahaskayeta found Bruno and Hiki, but the winger shot poorly over Wellington's goal. Ahaskayeta's cross found Rodrigo Cayo's head, and Wellington had to perform an incredible save to prevent the first goal of the match. But after a great play by the home side, 
Bruno and Hiki waltz past three defenders and delivered a perfect cross to Pedro, who had the easy job of pushing it into the net. Final score, Flamengo 1, Palmeiras 0 in the first round of the Campeonato Brasileiro. Sierra and Gremio entered the pitch with a lot of substitutes to give their worn-out players some rest. The result was nothing short of a fantastic game with a lot of goals and excitement until the very end. But Sierra scored in their first attempt in a shot that didn't look too much. The ball went through Gremio's defence, leaving goalkeeper Brenner without any chance of saving it. Lucky for Kleber, who went to celebrate with his teammates. Two minutes later, Sierra had the chance to double the score with Saulo, but he was denied by Breno in spectacular fashion. The home side continued to press, and Pedro Naresi passed to youth product Hick. The midfielder brushed off the defender with ease to score a great goal. When the match seemed to be over, Vanderson scored a remarkable goal to keep a tricolor alive in the match. The right back beat the defender with a spellbinding dribble, made a 1-2 with Mateus and Hiki and finished it off with a perfect shot. Vanderson's goal gave Gremio new spirit to seek a second and Hikajinho capitalised on that when he levelled the score with a header straight into the net. When the game started to go off the boil, the referee called for a penalty on Cortez but changed it with the aid of VAR. In the last minutes of the game, the match were decided in a bizarre way. A Sierra shot hit the post. Gremio's defence stopped, believing that Jorginho was in an offside position. The midfielder took advantage and gave the match its final colours. Sierra 3, Gremio 2. This was a great way for Sierra to start the season, and despite the loss, Gremio remained one of the title contenders. On the debut of manager Silvino in charge of Corinthians, the team performed poorly and failed to secure the win at the Neo Chemica Arena against Atletico Goianiense. The Musketeers almost scored what would have been a fantastic goal from Jamiro, who hit a powerful shot that forced Fernando Miguel into a great save. The goalkeeper went on to deny yet another clear goal opportunity by Mateus Vital with another sizzling shot after his defence failed to clear the ball upfield. Another big play for the Dragons goalkeeper. With many opportunities lost, the punishment came at the end of the first half. In a good move between Zé Roberto and João Paulo, the number nine appeared unopposed in the box to score in São Paulo. Atletico 1-0 up. In the search of an equaliser, Corinthians attacked with Gustavo Mosquito, who dribbled through the defenders and was brought down in the box by Nathaniel. Penalty for Corinthians. But Fernando Miguel was in superb form as he saved the penalty and the rebound by Mateus Vital. Another superb stop from the goalkeeper. The Musketeers still tried to avoid the defeat with a good shot by Luan that went wide. With more hope than technique, Corinthians tried lobbing passes into the box. One of them found Jo. The striker jumped higher than Electrico's defence but missed the goal. And that was that. Not a great start for manager Silvino in Corinthians' bench. 1-0 to Atletico Goianiense. The last two champions of Serie B met in the Elite League in Brazil. The first opportunity for the away side came with 15 minutes on the clock. Claudinho moved the ball to fire from outside the box. The ball smashed onto a defender before reaching Artur, who shot over. The home side finally got into gear. Mikey cut down the left and rolled back to top scorer Perotti, but the shot lacked power. An easy save for goalkeeper Clayton. Another cross into the box by Bagancino, this time on the left. 
Orsonello left centre back, Maciero one on one with Tiepo, but the defender shot wide. As Bragancino kept pushing, the goal came. Italo got on the end of a cross from the right and dived in to push the ball into the net. A nice goal for the visitors to open the score. Just two minutes later, another cross on the box on the right side. This time Lucas Evangelista went higher than the defenders to make it 2-0 for the header. Red Bull came back from the half-time with the same energy and forced Chiapo to make a miraculous save. Centre-back Fabrizio Bruno had a powerful header that sent the ball towards the net, but the goalkeeper avoided the third goal for the Massa Bruta. Bragancino then missed a great opportunity to nail Shappi's coffin. Lucas Evangelista set up Artur. The frontman then found Elinho, clear inside the box, but the midfielder missed the chance. Red Bull almost scored an incredible goal 23 minutes into the second half. Claudinho cut through the defenders with his left and then sent a sizzling shot at goal. The ball exploded onto the post, while Chiepo could only look on. Bragancino finally got the third goal. Alinho brushed off Mateus Sibero twice before firing a low shot into the net. A fabulous goal for the young player. A great showing from Red Bull Bragancino, who deserved the three points. For new boy Shappi, it was back to the drawing board. <music> Atletico Paranaense faced America Mineiro in the Arena de Baixada. In an equal match, the Furacan managed to score the winning goal in the final minutes of the game. Atletico's best opportunity of the first half came after 14 minutes when Christian got the rebound after a corner kick and released a powerful shot from outside the box. The ball exploded onto the keeper's post. Five minutes later, Nikau risked a very long shot. The ball deflected off America's defence and almost tripped the keeper, who just managed to save the effort. Atletico's winning goal came on the 86th minute. Sub, Carlos Eduardo attempted a cross on the left to Mateus Barbi, but the ball went straight through Barbi and into the net. That was the second goal for the forward of this season. The closing game of the first round was packed with controversy and excitement. International were favourites for the win against Sport in the Better Hill. The first half was completely dominated by the home team, who managed to open up the scoring on the 18th minute. Kaya Vidal was brought down in the box by Sander, and Ejen Ilsen converted the penalty with finesse to beat Maya Ilsen. The Lions tried to roll back after 35 minutes in the game, but were denied by Marcelo Lomba. Chago Neves headed the cross by Junior Tavares, forcing a great save by Inter's keeper, who still managed to save Rafael's rebound. Rodrigo Lindoso got on the end of Ejen Ilsen's corner kick to double the score, 2-0 to Inter. What appeared to be an easy victory for the Reds turned on its head as Sport started to dominate the game. Chago Neves tried a backheel pass in the middle of the box and Mauricio was adjusted to have handled. The referee called a penalty, but Chago Neves converted himself to score the first goal for the visitors. The Lions kept on pressing into his defence, levelling the score with five minutes to go. Gustavo's precise pass left Andre one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, the striker hit the net, but the referee ruled it out for offside. However, after four long minutes of revision, VAR confirmed the goal. This was the first goal for the frontman on his return to Hercifi. There was still time on the clock for yet another controversial moment. Late in stoppage time, Patricky and Prasciadis combined before Thiago Gagliardo found the net, but the referee had already blown his whistle as the ball had gone out of play, much to the disbelief of Inter's players. 2-2 and an electrifying end game in Porto Alegre. Let's now go to the top three goals of this first round. In third this week is midfielder Tassiano. Patricky De Lucas van Hossi on the right, the winger cut past, Luan Perez and crossed to find Tassiano who delivered a precise shot into the net. 
The second place goes to Pikachu. With a quick counter-attack, Davaji made a stunning long pass to Pikachu. The right back delivered a powerful shot that went straight into the corner. What a beauty! The first place goes to Vanderson, who scored a fantastic goal in the Castellan. With a mind-blowing trick that was reminiscent of French legend Zidane, the young player kept dribbling his way into the box and even did a 1-2 with Matez and Hiki before finding the net. <laughs> Fernando Miguel had already stopped Corinthians from scoring a number of times in the first half. But his most spectacular moment was in the second period. He saved the penalty shot from Mateus Vital and then denied the Corinthians midfielder a second time. Fernando Miguel, without doubt, the best player on the pitch. <laughs> Atletico Goianiense were already ahead in Neo Chemica Arena when the Dragons midfielder beat Corinthians Mateus Vital with his cheeky nutmeg. Even though he was squeezed between the sidelines and the Corinthians defenders, Honel did pretty well, don't you think? With this embarrassing dribble, he's the winner of this week's best skill of the Brazilian realm. Let's take a look at the players and the coach who impressed us in round one. In goal, we've gone for Fernando Miguel of Atlético Goianiense. At right back, Vanderson of Grêmio. The centre-backs are Juninho of Bahia and Leo Ortiz from Red Bull Bragantino. At left-back, Felipe Luiz from Flamengo. In midfield, Lucas Evangelista from Red Bull, Iago Pikachu Fortaleza, Tassiano Bahia and Jorginho of Sierra. Up front, Zé Roberto of Atlético Goianiense and Jose from Bahia. The manager is Juan Pablo Vovada of Fortaleza. Hulk got to score a goal in the Atletico Mineiro Fortaleza game, but the top player of the match was Iago Pikachu. He came off the bench to hit the two goals in the Lions' big win against Gallo away in Belo Horizonte. Fortaleza fought back from being 1-0 down to pull off an important victory thanks to the amazing performance of Pikachu, giving him the title of Best Player of the Week. The opening round of the Brasilia 2021 sees a cluster of sides on maximum points. Bragancino, Bahia, Siena, Fortaleza, Atletico Paranense, Flamengo and Atletico Goianiense all won. At the wrong end of the table, Grêmio, Atletico Mineiro, America Mineiro, Palmeiras, Corinthians, Chapecoense and Santos all came away with zero points after the first match. Left already? Despite being undefeated, coach Alberto Valentim left Cuiaba right after the game against Juventude. In 10 matches with Valentim in charge, Cuiaba had 7 wins and 3 draws. Even though he was unbeaten, the coach failed to deliver the good performances on the pitch which led to his dismissal. Shappy search for a new manager. Chapecoense may announce a new big name coach in the next few days. The club are talking to Luis Felipe Scolari and early negotiations have already started. One of the country's most iconic managers, Filipao led Brazil to a World Cup win in 2002 and Portugal to second place in the 2004 Euros. Strengthening the thighs, Santos confirmed their first two signings of this season. Left back Marais arrives on loan from Mirasol, while winger Marcus Guilherme was also brought in on loan from Internacional. Santos are also in negotiations with Mirasol to bring in defender Danilo Boza to reinforce the team for the competition. The curtain drops for a legend. After a fantastic history at Atletico Mineiro, legendary striker Diego Tardelli has finally said his goodbyes to the team. The 36-year-old frontman's contract has come to an end and he received a tribute for his contribution to Gallo. In 230 games, Tardelli scored 112 goals and won seven titles, including the 2013 Libertadores.
The Brasile Rao goes on as match week two starts on Saturday when Santos face Sierra in the Villa Balmiro, trying to bounce back after their loss in the first round. The day continues with Atletico Goianiense against San Paolo and Red Bull Bragantino against Bahia. On Sunday, Fluminense go head to head with Cuiabá in the iconic Maracaná. The match is the first big test for the Dorados in the top flight. The same goes for American Mineiro against Corinthians in Belo Horizonte. International battle with Fortaleza in the Castilhão, and the game expected to be one of the most exciting in the round. Also on the same day is Palmeiras against Chapecoense and Juventude versus Atletico Paranaense. And closing the round, Sport have a tough task against Atletico Mineiro's stellar squad. The date and time for the match between Grêmio and Flamengo at Matricolor's Arena has yet to be defined. That's it for this week. We hope you're enjoying our coverage of the toughest, most exciting league in the Americas. And we'll be back next week with more action from the Brasilirão.